It's actually too cold for Hawaiian shirts today. Clear and Present Danger Released in 1994 and directed by Philip Noyce. Budget of 62 million, a domestic take of 122 million, an international take of 93 million, for a worldwide total of 215 million, and a profit of 153. Less all marketing and associated costs. Starring Harrison Ford, William Defoe, Joachim. Joachim? Jo I can never say that name. I just. Mr. Almeida, Henry Cernsey, Harris Eulin, Donald Moffat, and Miguel Sandoval. And it was nice to see a whole bunch of recurring characters from uh, Patriot Games as well. Characters. Well, they were suitably complicated. I really did enjoy that. I mean, Harrison Ford is back as Jack Ryan. And that's good. I mean, that's always good. He does a really good job in this role. He plays Jack with a real subtle, understated sort of character. Uh, he's not an action man. He's a thinker. He's a emotional, honest um, good guy in this and he's dealing with a lot of shady politics and it's really nice to see him well having trouble dealing with that and in counterpoint to that you have these characters and they are up to their eyebrows and shady deals and dodgy politics and going out for well, justice and vengeance I suppose their intentions or their reasons are probably to them quite noble and justified just the way that they go about it breaks a whole bunch of rules and is most definitely illegal and the rest of the cast are quite excellent as well William Defoe does a very very good job the villains of the piece are particularly threatening one more so than the other but both very very well done and I love the way that towards the end of it the, the good guys and the bad guys started to blend together it started it got very hard to tell who was in the moral right or wrong in, in quite a few of their decisions. The standout though was watching Defoe and Ford's characters interact and do their thing. It was a weird combination of subtle and intense. It, it felt very real, it felt very full on. And even though their teaming up didn't really happen until what, third act? It, it still felt like a very strong and key component to the movie. The score for characters is going to end up being a 3.5. Everyone does a really good job in this. They're all quite engaging and you want to see more of all of them. Story. Okay, the story in this is quite good. You got the president wanting to push on with his war against drugs. You got his personal friend gets murdered who is then identified as being someone like in business with the cartels. And that's where it all starts to snowball. You've got the... I don't really find out what he is actually but either way I think he's a operations director or something like that but you've got these guys and, and they've got a plan they've got a plan to fix the problem basically their own private war so they start financing a black ops off the books totally illegal guerrilla unit operating deep in the jungles of Colombia hunting down and taking out both the drug lords and the supply chains and their factories and all of their assets it's quite an expensive little operation for the drug lords Sorry, I had to grab my coffee. Now it all starts to go wrong as things start to escalate. The, the special forces start hitting bigger targets. The drug cartels retaliate and it comes a culmination of a whole group of families of the cartels getting bombed into oblivion. At that point, a shady deal is struck and all support for these ground forces in Colombia illegally is withdrawn. And that's where the story goes from a really wide scope and narrows straight back down again to just Jack Ryan doing his best to try and put things right. And that's where you end up with him running around in Colombia with, with the foe's character, Mr. Clark. It really is intricately woven together, this one. It's, it's quite enjoyable to watch all the pieces slot together like a jigsaw puzzle. It's never really a mystery. There's no mystery to solve in this one. But what it is interesting is seeing all these separate components all slowly click together and become a total story by the end. I, I really enjoyed that. As a result, the score for this one is going to be a 3.75. Very good. Maybe a tad slow and drawn out every now and then, but overall, it just adds to it. Look and feel is pretty much like every other movie in this franchise so far. Everything looks realistic in realistic locations with suitable cars, uniforms, guns, levels of tech, you know, the scenery, the audio, everything. Everything just slots together very well. There's at no point in this movie you're thinking that's not where it should be. You never have any trouble believing you're back in the States or you're back in Colombia or in different areas in both. Very interesting interiors and exteriors to look at. The architecture, very engaging to observe, almost tells its own story sometimes. You know whose house you're in by the way it's designed. 
I know there's a lot of wide shots. The director really enjoys his establishing shots in this movie. There's a lot of that going on. There's always room for background. There's always room for more scope or more perspective shots. They're very, very good at that. Even something as simple as characters walking down a snowy hill. Sure, there's a close-up of some of the characters are talking, but most of it's taken up in very wide angles. Or very long shots leading to something particular in the background, or some sort of landmark, or some sort of scenic effect. Whenever I see that, it makes me feel the environment they're in. Very little CGI was used in this. I'd say this has got to be 95% practical effects, this film. And the only bits that are CGI are really quite stand out as CGI, very obviously computer generated graphics because they couldn't afford to do the real thing and there's no way they could get that camera shot normally. When a laser guided bomb is dropped off an aircraft and they track it down, yeah, it, it, you know, it did the job. It built the tension at least, despite it looking quite fake, it just built the tension up. And then the explosion that happened at the end, that was most definitely a practical effect. And it was a big one. So yeah, look and feel, great success. I'm going to give it a 3.75 as well. Never pulls you out of the movie, and if it does, it's just for a little tiny moment. Script and dialogue. Okay, I'm going to start in an unusual place on this one and go with the fact that there's a lot of support characters that I saw in Patriot Games uh, in the CIA office. You know, all the analysts and the assistants, the guys that helped Jack Ryan last time. Well, they're back in this one. I, I didn't expect them to do that. Um, I don't know why I didn't notice it the last couple of times I've seen this movie, or maybe I did and just forgot. But it was nice to see them back in some key roles. Key story structure support roles, not main, main movie roles. But that was nice. And as per you'd expect from these films now, there's lots of understated dialogue going on, general chatter, lots of things happening, and almost in passing, or you'll hear them happening on the TV, there's a news report that about something happening. And that's usually heavily tied into the scene that just happened before, or leading on to what's about to come. The movie's constantly giving you information, either visually or audibly. And in amongst all this, you've got the characters behaving kind of casual about it all. It really does feel like just conversation conversation in a very, I don't know, shadowy workplace. There are a couple of lighter moments in the movie, which is nice. Nothing outrageously funny, which I'm very glad for. But at the same time, they're just, they're just nice little brighter moments, clever moments in the movie, where you get to appreciate a character or a scenario. And it doesn't ha not everything has to be full on intense. The only downside is that some of the actors mumble a bit, or the lines are at least delivered very, very quietly or subtly or too quickly or not facing the camera or something. All very natural, all very realistic but I needed to put the subtitles on. I really did for this movie, otherwise I knew I was going to miss things. On one hand, it's not a really big deal. On the other hand, this movie relies on the details. It hangs on details. And so to have characters saying very, very important things, but very, 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 very that's not cool. That's annoying. But it's okay. Subtitles are here to help people like me. Anyhow, script and dialogue for this, I'll be giving it a score of 3.5. You really want to know what happens after this movie. Fun fact, uh, man, I had a good time in this. Again, it's one of those movies where fun doesn't really apply in as much as, oh, wasn't that a jolly good time? No, <laughs> no, it's, it's more of an intense political thriller sort of fun. So I, fun fact is still high to me. I still really enjoyed it. I was very, very much engaged in this film. Even though I have seen this movie quite a few times now, it still gets me every time. And I still love pe putting all the pieces together and I leave enough of a gap between each viewing that I can't just sleepwalk through it either. I think the most fun in this movie is watching Jack Ryan piece it together. Watching his mind work. Watching him figure out that something's not only dodgy, but start to realise that his own government is actually the dodgy part of this. Watching Harrison Ford get all emotionally invested and cranky about things in his movies is always a good time. So yeah, fun factor, 3.5. It gets you in. You really enjoy it. And I totally recommend it. Final score. Add them all together, you get yourself an 18. It's good. I really like this series. I really enjoy the way they make these films. I understand there's like another one after this. I think it's got to do with nuclear bombs or something. But it doesn't have Harrison Ford in it. So I'm not sure what to make of that. I'll have to look into it.
He is hoping I'm happily surprised. Anyhow, have you seen this movie? And have you enjoyed the series of these movies? Uh, Tom Clancy's adaptions. Personally, I'm quite enjoying it. I'm actually tempted to go and look at the TV series based around all this stuff as well. That might be interesting too. Anyhow, that's it from me. Hope you've had a good time. Please like, share and subscribe. And as always, I hope you're having a very good week and that you make some time to go and watch a movie.